Hey everyone, so in this video I wanted to do some subspace tests with matrices and polynomial vector spaces. So let's jump right into it. We are trying to show that this uh, set of vectors S is a subspace of polynomials of the second degree. And the condition here is that the first or the, the coefficient of the zero degree term must be equal to the negative of the second degree term. So first we want to consider um, if the zero polynomial, which is actually just zero, is in this subspace. So consider when, when a1 is equal to zero, notice that is equal to negative c1, which is equal to b1. In this, so in this case, we have zero is in s. Okay, so the zero polynomial is in this vector space. Okay. So next, we need to add two polynomials together. Okay, so let's let a2 plus b2x plus c2x squared be in s. Okay, so remember this implies that a2 would be equal to minus c2. Okay, so let's add two polynomials from this vector space together. Well, this here would be equal to, let's group the terms together. Let's zoom in a bit here. Okay, but notice that you know a1 is just minus c1, and a2 is minus c2. And we can factor out the negative, right? Lots of writing here. And if you can't see it already, We've shown here that, okay, well, the second degree coefficient, c1 plus c2, is the negative of the first one, right? So clearly, this is part of s because we've got, our, in, in this case, you know, negative c1 equals a1. Same thing as negative a1 equals c1, right? They're just negatives of each other. So we can, we can see that very clearly here. So this is in S. So next we need to see, let's multiply this polynomial that's in S by a scalar. Okay. And we want to see, is this also going to be in S? Well, okay, this is just going to be TA1 plus B1x plus C1, or oh, forgot all these constants, geez. TB1x plus TC1x squared. Okay. Great. All right. And we know that A1 is just going to be negative C1, right? And let's just move the negative outside already. And should be pretty clear here. See the zero degree coefficient and the second degree coefficient are negatives of each other. So this satisfies the condition of S. So this is also an S. So therefore, this is a subspace of polynomials of the second degree. Okay. Therefore, S is a subspace of second degree polynomials with real coefficients. So what if we wanted to find a basis for this subspace, okay? Well, for this, we would just have to take the generalized form of this something in the subspace, right? A1 plus B1x plus C1x squared. 
And we need to sub in this condition, right? The condition is that a1 is equal to minus c1, right? So let's do minus c1 plus b1x plus c1x squared. And we can pull out this c1 term now. And we get x squared minus 1 is times c1 plus b1 times x. Now, if you can see here, this, this is just a, a, a linear combination, right? A linear combination of x squared minus 1 and x, right? And we know that this provides us with anything in s, right? And you can see that x and x squared minus 1 are linearly independent since we can't write them as a combination of the others. So the set here, let's call it b1, the basis x squared minus 1 and x, this here is a subspace, or is the basis for the subspace S. Let's move on to question 2. Question 2 gives us a vector space where we have A, which is a 2 by 2 matrix, and it has to satisfy this condition that AB equals CA transpose. And it doesn't say in the question here, but you can assume that B and C are also 2 by 2 matrices. Now, Okay, first, similarly, we had the, instead of the zero vector, instead of the zero polynomial, we want to show the zero matrix is in this subspace. So the two by two zero matrix times a matrix B will still be a two by two zero matrix, right? And this is also the same thing as doing C times the transpose of a two by two zero matrix. So the zero matrix is in V. Okay, that's the first one. Now let's let's let A1 and A2 be in V. And again, this implies that A1B is equal to C times A1 transpose as well as a2b is equal to c times a2 transpose. By saying a1 and a2 are in the subspace v, this implies that it, this property must hold true. So we want to check if we add a1 and a2 together. So if we multiply this by b, should it equal to c times a1 plus a2 all transposed? And let's find that out. We've got a1b plus a2b from definition that we just found, right? We've got C1A transpose, and now we've got C times A2 transpose. Let's factor out the C, and we have A1 transpose plus A2 transpose. Almost done. From properties of transpose of matrices, we can take out the transpose, and this is exactly what we tried to show. This is a, this is clearly in V. Great. S not V not S. There we go. <laughs> okay. Now let's multiply A by a scalar and see if this property still holds true. So let's let's let K be equal to a constant. So K A times B. Well, this is a K times A B. Scroll down a bit. And this is now C times A transpose, which is C times K A transpose, right? Which is C times K A transposed. And this is from properties of transpose. If, the, if it were inverses, this would not be the case, right? But for transpose, we know these properties all hold true. And this is exactly what we tried to show. Ka times b is equal to c times ka transpose. So this is in v. So it's passed all three parts of the subspace test. Zero matrix is in v. Addition of two matrices in v results in another matrix in v. 
and scalar times a matrix in V results in a matrix in V, right? And we verified that with the condition that we showed is true. So now we're asked to find a sub or a basis for the subspace, okay? If V is equal to, if B is equal to this matrix and C is equal to that matrix. Okay. So we know that, well, first, okay, let's define what A is. A, B, C, D. Because remember, our goal here is to sort of come up with like a generalized form that we can break up into a linear combination of different matrices because that will span, you know, the entire vector space V, right, if we're using our definition. So we know that, okay, we've got A, B, C, D. If we multiply it by the matrix B, which is 1, 1, 0, 1, we know that that has to equal C times the transpose of A. And the transpose of A, remember, the diagonal will stay the same and all the other entries should switch up on us. So the C becomes B, and then the B becomes C. Now there's multiple ways that you could do this uh, matrix algebra. I'm not going to write out all of it because this, there's tons of resources online that you could find out how to do this. But the first entry would be the first column of the second matrix dotted with the transpose of the um, first row, AB. So one zero dotted with AB, so that's just A. And then second entry, we've got one zero dotted with CD, so this is C. And then our second entry, same logic with the second column now though. So A plus B and C plus D. Okay, and then this one should be easier. We've got A plus B, right? Dotted with one, one, it's A plus B. And then we've got A plus B again. And then second column, C plus D dotted with first row, C plus D dotted with the second row. And this is what we get, okay? If this wasn't clear, just look up some how to multiply matrices, tons of things online to tell you how to do this, okay? So we get a couple equations from this, right? And the system of equations, reminder, this, this results in a, like the solution to this system of equation is the, res like anything that is in the vector space V, right? And that's what we're trying to generalize, right? So we get from the first entry that A has to equal A plus B. From the second entry, we get A plus B must be equal to C plus D. From equation three, we have the C must be equal to A plus B. And then finally, equation four, we have C plus D is equal to C plus D. Now, you could solve this. We've got four unknowns, A, B, C, and D. And we've got four equations, right? You could solve this many ways. A matrix, substitution, elimination. What we're going to do here is try to make this as easy as possible. I don't want to row reduce something uh, that's four by four. So let's see what we can do here. Well, equation four is trivial. This is always going to hold true, c plus d equals c plus d. So this is, this equation four is basically useless to us. From equation one, we can right away tell that b has to equal zero, right? Just solving that, right? If a could be anything, but b has to equal zero for this to be true, right? And all four of these equations have to hold true. But if b is equal to zero, that means that a is equal to c plus d. From equation three, we get C is equal to A, right? Because B is equal to zero. But if C is equal to A, we can plug that into this guy. And then we would get that C equals C plus D, or D has to equal zero, right? So notice that we could solve this using a matrix. Do we want to? No, because this was much easier. Right? So if you did want to make a matrix, 
you could do it with four equations. You could notice that equation four is doing nothing. You could say that you know b is equal to zero, and then you could solve a matrix for uh, the a, c, and d, right? Using equation two and three. So that would be a two by three matrix. Row reduce that. Read the solutions off of it. Um, but honestly, by inspection, this is, in my opinion, easier. So. Remember, what are we trying to do here? A, B, C, and D, okay? We are trying to generalize this, but C is equal to A, B is zero, and we solve D is equal to zero as well, right? So factoring out the A, we just get A times this matrix right here, right? So we have found Basically, a scalar multiplied by this matrix, the scalar could be whatever you want, and this will span something in the vector space V, right? So the basis, let's call it B2, would actually just be this matrix, right? It's the span of this matrix. And in this case, with those, with those selections for matrix B and matrix C, we have found that the dimension of this vector space is actually only one. Okay. And that is pretty much it. So remember for a subspace test, same rules kind of apply. Um, and for finding the basis, you're just sort of trying to uh, generalize using the equation that is usually given in your, uh, in your vector space or subspace definition sort of trying to generalize it and break it up to show that it is a linear combination of some variables or terms um, that span the entire vector space. Hope this video was helpful.